Stock assessments. Again, this is a high level overview of how the process works. So uh, stock assessments basics. What a stock assessment is not. Stock assessment is not interviewing people about what they caught or measuring fish. A lot of people think, a lot of hear this all the time and it drives me crazy. Oh, I saw the guy at the, at the boat ramp and I told him we caught 100 fish because I didn't want him to think that there weren't any fish out there. Wrong. You screwed up. You caused a problem. That might be one of the reasons we're having this intercept problem. Another thing I hear all the time, well, I saw the guy at the boat ramp and I didn't want to tell him that I caught uh, a bunch of fish because then the season got closed, so I told him we didn't catch anything. Wrong. Then you're showing that there's not a lot of fish out there. you got to be as truthful as possible. Truth in the surveys help. And a lot of people say, I don't want to talk to the guy at the boat ramp because he's going to skew my information. No, that is just a state employee in many cases. Uh, sometimes it's a federal employee, but most of the time it's a state person, a biologist who cares, who wants to help preserve the fishery. It is very important to talk to those people and be as truthful as possible. The more people that talk to those people at the boat ramp and give the people with the clipboard information, the more information they have. So the harder, if you believe they're skewing information, if you give them more information, it's harder to skew the data points. If you have a small sample size, the data can be skewed very, very easily. If you have a large sample size, you get a lot of people talking to you, it's harder to skew that information. So more information, more truthful information is very important. Also, a stock assessment is not counting fish. A stock assessment is all the activities done to determine the condition of the stock. Basically, it's a temperature of where that stock biomass is. They use modeling, and models are super, super complex when it comes to stock assessments. Uh, it's very, very, very complex. We're going to get into that a little bit here. So this is... Uh, a kind of a simplified example, those old word problems from school. Uh, but the let's skip through that because it's a little too basic. But it starts really basic and it shows you how complicated a stock assessment can be. And I am not a mathematician, so I'm not going to walk through these slides perfectly uh, because, again, I'm not a mathematician. But it shows you basically how a stock assessment process is started very simply by trying to uh, do a simple example from how many catfish are stocked in a pond. And you basically do how many catfish or how many fish are at the beginning of the year, uh, how many fish they think they put into the pond minus the catch, and then that gives you the fish at the start of year two. But that doesn't come into account for a lot of different things like natural mortality, catchability, uh, catch per unit of effort. So I'm going to scroll down and show you as as they add more variables, how much more complicated the process or the model gets. And this is still a very simplified model, and I have no idea what's going on at this point. I'm lost, and I assume many people are, unless you're a math whiz, um, which there are a lot of math whizzes out there, but that's not me. So this is, again, still a very simplified one or two variables uh, into it. And look at that. It's a pretty complicated model. Now, as you get into the real modeling, this is a very basic look at maybe one of the pages, and I don't know if I can make this any bigger. I can. Look at that. Uh, oh, too big. I lost it. I know it's further down here. So this is a uh, simplified look at some of the information. The MRIP modeling, how they come up with the federal numbers, is uh, like 125 pages of formulas like the one above my head. It is absolutely asinine how complex, how complex the modeling is. And the reason it's so complex is they're having to uh, survey and get, basically guesstimate and extrapolate information because there's not a, a, a fully known number. The number, the universe of anglers isn't well defined. So they're essentially kind of estimating how many people are out there. They're essentially estimating how uh, the CPUE or catch per unit of effort is affecting the landings. Then they're essentially estimating the landings. They're estimating the discards. Everything about the private recreational landings and the numbers are estimated. Now, they're estimated through really, really complex modeling, and it's peer-reviewed, and there's a lot of checks and balances. But ultimately, 
because of that estimation, things can get skewed. And when the sample size is only 32 intercepts, like I showed you before, that's where we run into problems like we have with the gag grouper. So there's a bunch of different methods to data modeling and stock assessments. And definitely as you go down, they get more detailed uh, outputs, but the complexity of the model increases exponentially and it has more data needs. So the best best form, in my opinion, of a stock assessment is that one right above my head, the multi-species and ecosystem stock assessment. That would be a lot of people talk about like red snapper. Well, we see more red snapper, but now we don't have grouper. And the idea is as red snapper grow in size, there's more red snapper out there. They might displace some grouper species or, Hey, we have more red snapper. We also have more lane snapper. Maybe they're spawning together. Maybe because there's more red snapper depressing the number of red grouper and gag grouper. Maybe there's more lane snapper because there's no grouper eating them. So basically this multi-species and ecosystem modeling approach wouldn't just look at one species with tunnel vision. It would look at what happens when you manage this species. What does it do to impact the rest of the food web and the rest of the Gulf of Mexico ecosystem? So this multi-species and ecosystem approach is kind of the gold standard. But as I said, as you go down this list, the model complexity exponentially increases, the output detail increases, and the quality increases, but the data needs are exponentially higher. And that's why we're more up here. Most of our species are using data limited models. A lot of our species are data limited or data poor, as they say. Uh, data limited is a more PC way to say they're data poor, meaning we don't know shit <laughs> stage based models are where some species are like red snapper are getting a lot more information uh, great american red snapper count just pumped a ton of information into the system so fish that we know more about can have more complex modeling uh, but as we saw just recently they spent three years and 270 plus people working on a red snapper research track stock assessment model and they just threw the whole thing away because the third party peer reviewers came in and said we don't like the way you approach this there was too much information that was kind of guesstimated so we're going to throw this away so the model got too complex, there's too many variables, and it didn't pass the third-party peer review. So we'll get more into that. So high-level overview. So let's not get too far into the weeds just yet. So uh, practical definition of a stock assessment, we're going to move through that. So that was our first look at a high-level overview of the fisheries science part of it.